What were you doing? Having a little conversation with Melissa. That's private up there. You had no right. Just like you had no right to be seducing that poor girl with stolen poetry. You had no right to interfere. She had a right to know. Oh, no. You haven't told her. Not about the poetry. You can't base a relationship on lies. I have to talk to her. I wouldn't advise it. She needs a little time to herself. Then she's going to stay with friends. I took more than a little pleasure knowing that he was the one who'd been duped. Maybe I should march right outside and tell Melissa's dad about you. Tell him that you've got her upstairs. Tell him that you've broken her heart. You wouldn't. What about that poor, innocent kid? I think what it would do to her. <laughs> he ought to know. Please. Oh, God, no, you wouldn't. He'll kill me. You're breaking my heart. On the other hand... Yes, yes. You tell me what I want to know, and... I forget about your house guest. Blackmail wasn't really my style. And suddenly, I wasn't so sure who was being duped anyway. Very well. Now will you tell me about Bruno? Well, he, he was here, but he's gone. He Upton went one night. Did he leave anything behind? He was in a hurry. He just grabbed his pathetic belongings, threw them in his bag, and off he went. We must have left something. Nothing worth looking at, believe me. Letters, notes, a phone number? No. He took everything with him. Only... Aha! So he did leave something. Well, yes. But what good is an old pair of pants to you? Pants? Give them to me. I found them in the laundry pile after he'd vermoosed. Did you examine them? No. What kind of a chap do you think I am? Excellent. Come on, let me see them. You're a sick man. What are you waiting for? Oh, man, these aren't pants. Yes, they are. No, they're not. These are shorts. What are you? Some kind of underwear detective? Oh, heck. I'll take them anyway. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I said. The shorts belong to Bruno. I didn't want to examine them too closely. Hi again. Okay, let me cross your palm. Never mind, Dot. What you got for me? Quick! You're really getting into this, aren't you? The doors to the other side are open. I wouldn't get too excited. You ought to watch the Twilight Zone on reruns. Hubris gets you smacked down every time. Rod Serling said so. I'd like you to look at some boxer shorts. Now, just wait a minute. I don't want no funny stuff. No, seriously. I want you to use that psychic hoodoo on them. Them no belong to the sea of manners before? No, not unless they were into sharing. Good. Me don't want to experience anything like that again, ever. Very well. How did you know my name? Was that a psychic flash? <laughs> a lot! When you were talking to Eamon O'Mara, me was standing in my own doorway. Me overheard your name when you was introducing yourself. Ah, cunning. The... Uh, item of apparel, please. Getting anything? Apart from nauseated? Cha, no, me sorry. Oh, no! What? What can you see? Dragon fire! No, a man and a dragon seek his death. He only has minutes to live. Oh, the flames. No! No, the f Madam Zazie? Madam Zazie? She was out cold, but okay. 
I must admit, sometimes my shorts had the same effect on women. <laughs> if she was right, Bruno would be dead soon. I had to act fast. But how? I didn't even know where he was. Luckily, I got a hint. I tried to open the door. The door was locked. It wasn't opening time yet. Ugh. Come on! Come on! It was no good. The door was too sturdy. I just wasn't strong enough. Please! I need help! I'm an asthete, not a psychiatrist. I'm serious. There's a fire. Someone's trapped, but that door's in the way. Say no more. I may have the soul of a poet, but I've the heart of a lion. Lead on! Excellent. Thanks, Eamon. No trouble. Just sorry there wasn't a camera crew around to catch me being heroic. I can take it from here. Sure. I'll call the fire brigade. Then I'm going to sort out that bloody thieving hippie. Hey, you, wait! Evil monks. I hate those guys. I didn't have time to go after them, though. If Zazie was right, Bruno was about to get a pre-mortem cremation. Anybody in here? Call out! Ugh. <coughs> Over here! Help me! Help me, please! I'm on my way! There was some poor guy, Bruno, I guess, 
tied up and left to die in the burning building. Are you okay? Can you walk? I... I think so. Good. Come on. This place is about to collapse. There was no time to chat. We had to get out of there. Come on! We're out of here! Get down! Ah! Oh! Is this down enough for you? Whoa, that was a close one. It was indeed a close one, yes. Thank you. I am indebted to you. Glad to be able to help, Bruno. It is Bruno, isn't it? Now I must be on my way. Wait a minute. We've met before. I know you. You know my name is Bruno, but I am not knowing you. Where do you come from? A small country in Eastern Europe. You would not be able to pronounce it. Wait a minute. I remember now. The foyer of the Hotel Ubu in Paris. You're Ostwald, the Nobel Prize winner. Oh, my goodness. Stobart! You're a Neo-Templar, you son of a bitch! No, listen to me. I left the Neo-Templars. They were evil. The Grand Master, he was all lies. The last time I'd seen Bruno was when I went head-to-head -head with a weird bunch known as the Neo-Templars. It had ended badly at a place called St. Ninian's. And true, Bruno wasn't lined up with the bad guys when the curtain came down. Let's say I believe you. Who's after you now? The Neo-Templar Order was not destroyed, only badly weakened. It now seeks revenge against its enemies. In their eyes, I am a traitor. They do not forget. They do not forgive. Yeah, I'm not on the Christmas card list either. Hi, Colonel. Everything sorted? Soon will be. Just off to get party. Who was the weirdo in the monk's habit? I do not know. I think maybe one of Susaro's men. Susaro? To know him? As well as any stranger who tries to kill me. What's Susaro's interest in the Congo? The Congo? Yeah, I found a postcard from you there. It's how I found you. Of course. My friend, Dudley Chumley. You mean Chalmundley? No, no, no. Chumley. Drive him crazy being called Cholmondeli. Not anymore, I'm afraid. Cesaro got to him before I did. What about Chumley's machine? Did it really work? Poor Dudley. His machine, yes, it worked. But only at that one place in the world. Why there? Like St. Ninians, it is focus of natural energy. Geomantic energy. I have made a device that can locate the more powerful sites. And Cesaro is doing the same. But of course. So, Cesaro wanted the site in the Congo to use its energy? No. It was a poorly developed site, and Dudley had already dissipated much of its power. But Cesaro knew this. He is not just tapping such locations. He is doing something else. How do you know? He is making the world sick. You have heard these reports of earthquakes and floods. Cesaro is doing that? They are side effects. Every 12,000 years, the energy builds up to a peak. This is natural. But Cesaro is changing the build-up somehow, putting the world in danger. I fear he has found the Temple of the Dragon and activated it. This geomantic stuff is losing me. Imagine the world as living thing. Its energies, they run in lines through it. Like ley lines? They are ley lines. The Chinese call it the Dragon Current. So what has Cesaro done with this power? There is a place, the Temple of the Dragon. It is possible to make the energy there very powerful very strong. Where is this place? Its location has been long forgotten. I think Cesaro may have found it. Cesaro doesn't look like a well man. He has dabbled with the energy for too long. At first it made him strong. Now it has made him only more or less human and he is dying. Success doesn't just mean incredible power for him. 
It means his very survival. How did Cesaro get control of the Neo Templars? With the Grand Master dead, the Order fell into chaos. Cesaro quickly took over. Anyone who opposed him was dead within a week. So, Cesaro's now the new Grand Master? In all but name. He never liked the Templar trappings. He calls it now the Cult of the Dragon. Dedicated to giving him power. Power to do what? Anything, Stobart. And everything. So what brought you to Glastonbury? I was in Paris. It is a major power focus. Susaro's men found me. I was lucky to escape with my life. I came here. Why Glastonbury? See the tor up there? It is a power site. A very important one. Look at its history, its folklore. You know, Saint Michael, he killed a dragon here. On the tour. Yeah, well, you can't believe everything you read, huh? Yes, you must. This is true. Cesaro's men obviously came here after you. They are on my trail. Why don't you come with me to Paris? Cesaro has many agents in Paris. I would be in deadly peril. Well, don't you think it's time we took this war to Signor Cesaro? Stobart, you cannot stop this dragon cult by yourself. I stopped the Neo-Templars once. I can do it again. Let me at the thieving Aegis. Take my little Lissy, would you? I'm going to kill you, you blighter. Violence isn't the answer. Yes, it bloody is. Ow! Oh! Oh! Not the face! Not the face! Daddy! No! Trouble? Oh, just another wild party. Uh, I don't think we should gate crash. Two days. Lost. Two days in a stinking cell on blown-up charges. That stupid, stupid policeman. If I see him again... Yes? Alcatraz, who do you wish to talk to? Nico? Candice? Where have you been? Staying with friends. The boss is after you. Thanks for the warning. Keep him off my back, would you? I'll try. Thanks. See you. Bye. I still hadn't found what was so special about the dead guy. My battered old phone had seen better days. I thought I should check my messages. You have... new... messages. Bonjour, mademoiselle. I've got a very important word for you. Soffits. Now, when was the last time you checked your soffits? Hmm, I thought so. Well, I am calling from the Stop It Rotting Soffit Company, and I want to tell you about the Socket to em Soffit Offer. A 50% discount on all soffits ordered before the end of the month. Just remember, your soffits say a lot about you. Why not let us stop the rot in your life? Oh, and don't worry about calling us. I'll call you back. Nico, this is your editor. Remember me? Where in hell have you been for the last two days? What's all this nonsense about being arrested? Give me a call as soon as you get this message. Perhaps I should make a call. Better check in with my paper. The news desk? Hi, Candice. Is he in? He's in another meeting. He phoned me and left a message on my machine. I'll get him to call you when he's free. Bye now. Perhaps I should make a call. I wondered if Andre might have any ideas. Andre Lobino? Hi, Andre. Nico, where the hell have you been? I've been trying to reach you for two days. The police arrested me. What? Are you crazy? What happened? They held me in the cells for two days on trumped up charges and then released me without a word of apology. I just hope the trail hasn't gone cold. What are you going to do now? Look for more clues, I suppose. There's a safe in the apartment, hidden under the floor. In the coder's apartment? That's right. Seems to me you need to find the combination for that safe. 
Andre. I'm going to get back to the investigation. I'd bought the TV and DVD player some time ago, but had hardly had the chance to use it. I didn't have the time to spend watching TV. It had once belonged to my father. It was my most precious possession. The statue was an ugly little thing. It would probably have been worth a fortune if it hadn't been badly worn across the shield. I was scared to look inside for fear of what I would find. I knew how to cook, but these days all I did was throw stuff into the microwave. I had not had the chance to read half the books on my shelves. I didn't know why I kept buying them. It was a photo of my old friend, George. I wondered what he was doing right now. Probably running a clam bake somewhere for his law firm. We had some good times together, and more than our share of dangerous ones too. George had given me this picture. I never could bring myself to throw it away. The bathroom door was looking a little shabby. Not right now. Looking after houseplants wasn't my forte. The clown's red nose was a clue that George and I once found. It made me think of him when I touched it. The door kept the world at bay, mostly. I considered leaving the apartment and decided to visit Vonnen's place. She asked so many questions. Odd questions. If you ask me, she wasn't really a reporter. She knows you are a witness. <laughs> Not that I want to worry you. You're right. I saw her entering the poor boy's apartment. Then I heard the shots. I don't know how you sleep. Bonjour. <gasps> Bonjour, mademoiselle. I thought you'd been arrested. They released me. I didn't kill him. You made a mistake, Edith. Oh, I don't think so. About the woman you saw. I'm looking at her right now. Are there any details you can remember that might help? I told the police everything. Why should I tell you? Because she tried to frame me for murder. Ha! Huh? What do you take me for? A character in some kind of detective story? She's had a nasty shock. She's not the only one. She did tell me something. Something she overheard Vernon say. Go on. It could be important. He said... The... The power was... Uh, Building up? And he mentioned a manuscript. I don't know if that helps. It might. Thanks.
The door was locked. I couldn't hear anything. The apartment was silent. The door was securely locked. The window was now locked tight. hear anything. The police had done a very good job sealing the crime scene. The flat had been securely locked up. I could see the key in the keyhole inside the door. The door was locked. There wasn't enough of a gap to fit the card through. I had to find out why Vernon wanted to see me, and why he was killed before he got the chance. This was an old trick, but it might just work. Let's see whether those old TV shows were accurate. Aha! Gently does it. It worked. The key landed neatly on the paper. I couldn't open the door until I'd unlocked it. The lock opened with a satisfying click. A box of tissues stood on the counter. A girl should never be without a tissue. The trash can contained no clues. I had a pretty good idea who was going to be behind the door. The poor thing looked as though she'd been crying for days. Excuse me, Beatrice. Why have you come here? Didn't the police arrest you? They released me. I didn't kill Vernon, but I saw the woman who did. What do you want with me? I want to help. Go away! Here. I understand if you don't want to talk. <laughs> Thanks. Can I ask you about Vernon? He was very anxious to meet you. What did he want to talk to me about? Do you know? Not the details. He was acting so strangely. Go on. He said his life was in danger. Wouldn't let me come up to the flat. We had to meet in the gardens. Why was he so scared? It was those people. Who? I don't know. They paid Vernon 
to crack some old manuscript. I don't know why it was such a big deal. Anyone can see the manuscript on the internet. So did he crack it? Of course. Vernon's the best. He was the best. <laughs> so what happened then? They told him to keep quiet. Threatened him. That was six months ago. So he risked his life to speak to me. But why now? He said it was all coming true. What was? He wouldn't tell me. The stuff in the manuscript, I suppose. Do you know anything about Vernon's safe? Only that he's got one somewhere. You don't know the combination? No. It would have to be easy to remember, though. Vernon had a terrible memory. Really? I used to laugh because he was always asking me my birthday. Go on. What's your birthday again, babe? He'd say. 23rd of October. Same every year, I tell him. <laughs> okay, Beatrice. I'll leave you alone now. No! Wait! What about that woman? What if she comes back? Don't worry. She won't. What are you going to do? I'm going to find her and get to the bottom of this. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. If you think of anything, or just need to talk, I'm at 361 Rue Jarry. Thanks. I appreciate it. Under the floorboard was a small safe with an electronic lock. Piecing together the information from Beatrice, I figured that her birth date was the combination I needed. Et voila! There were only two things inside. A hand-drawn diagram and a DVD disc. Vernon claimed the diagram had some importance. The DVD disc didn't have a label. I didn't care who it was for. A reporter has to get her leads where she can. I just needed a DVD player to view it on. had the DVD and now I needed to take a look at its contents. Going back to my place was the best option. What the? My God, that was close. That was the sports car I was looking for earlier. considered leaving the area and decided to visit my apartment. <laughs> 